this little goodie at Hobby Lobby. Okay, it's a wood blank. It has some um, braces on the back and it has a little rope where you can hang it. It was $9.99, but it was 50% off. So go check this out. So we're gonna paint this little thing and then we are going to add some glass bits to it because you know, we can. So that is what we're working on. So you can get this at Hobby Lobby. It's about 18 inches wide and nine and a half inches this way. So it's 18 by nine esch. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and just paint this and we're gonna add some green glass to our rind and we may be adding a little black or some black glass to the seeds. We're just gonna play it by ear and see what we think as we go. So I have two greens that I brought to the dance. One is Hauser medium green. We'll throw a little bit of that on our plates. Ugh, that's kind of icky. And I also, I also brought, let me shake this up. Thank you for the stars. We're almost there, 16 seconds. Uh, this is fresh cut grass. These will make really nice colors for the rind. We may need a little darker color, but we'll see. Uh, I bought that porch swing when I was in Atlanta for market. I don't even remember the company name because I bought it like back in January and I really, it just got here. I've had it maybe a month. So I had forgo even forgotten about it until it just showed up. And so I cannot remember who I bought it from, but I'm pretty sure I have an invoice somewhere. You bought a sunflower from Hobby Lobby? You'll, well, stay tuned because you'll know what to do with it now. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit of this buttercream yellow that we're gonna kinda add between the green and the red for our rinds. And then we are going to add, I think I'm gonna do my green and then we'll put the red on the plates. So let's go ahead and just get started on the green. Hey, Connie, thank you so much. That's very sweet. Um, don't, let me see. Oh, I forgot my paper towel. Hang on one second. I'll grab some napkins. Ugh. Whew. Hey, Donna, I'm so glad we sent you. Appreciate you coming. So I'm just gonna use my darker green and I am going to just paint along the rind. And I am going to hit the edges on this thing. So let's go ahead and get that done too. We'll hit that edge. It kinda wants to soak up, but it's okay. Thank you for the stars. I am actually gonna put this on the front door of my studio, but it's like a door hanger, I think. But you could hang it anywhere, in your house, outside, in your garden. You might wanna put a coat of sealer on it if you're gonna hang it in outside where it's exposed. Yeah, are we talking about the swing i was so sad i'm gonna get my edges so that we can move on and do the front so give me one second we'll get that edge done i knew i didn't get enough green but we'll figure it out this stuff soaks up the paint this raw edge on the wood just eating it up hey everybody Thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging out. If anybody here is here because Lee sent you from the Turquoise Valentine, give me a thumbs up. Let me know she sent you here so I can say hello. I'm gonna need some more green. Look, Jackie, careful. You don't want that to happen. Look at that nastiness. Look at that. That is so gross. Hang on. 
Gotta get that off. Yuck. Let's see if that'll do. <laughs> that was gross. I'm trying to get this edge done so we can get on past it. Yay. Hey, Cynthia. I'm good. How are you? Trying to get the edge of this. It's soaking up the paint like crazy. And I did fine sand this a little bit. Yeah, it was a paint booker. I did fine sand this a little bit before I started to make sure it didn't have any splinters. But uh, apparently not good enough. Okay. So let's go ahead and get to working on the front now. Got that behind us. So I'm just gonna get this grind painted, and this is gonna take more than one coat. So I'm not gonna try to be perfect, and I'm gonna have to get another green, because that green is out. Hopefully I have another of the same color. If I don't, we'll make do with something. Let's see what we have. We're gonna go with this color. I don't have another of the same color handy, so I'm just gonna throw some crocodile on there. It's really similar and it wants to make noise. Nice. Hey, Janet. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Angela. If you guys came from Lee's site, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate Lee as well, my bud. She's my Mexican food buddy. So I'm just gonna get it on the outside edge Guess my hat keeps getting in the way too. Hey Lorraine. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out for a bit. I'm gonna try to get this done in a short amount of time. Sometimes I get to yickety yakking and things get a little crazy. This was not too bad for a first coat once I change paint colors. I'm gonna go into the lighter color, which is the Fresh Cut Grass, and I'm just gonna kinda come in and go right up to that rind line with that lighter green, just to give it some variety color. Let me scoot that back over so you can actually see what I'm doing instead of painting off the camera view. <laughs> so let's see, I'm gonna get right up next to that rind line. We'll blend that in. Now we're gonna add, for my piece, I'm gonna be adding green glass, so I'm not gonna be too nitpicky about um, the color of this green because I'm gonna be putting green right on top of it, glass. So not much of this is gonna show, but if you're just gonna seal it and not add the glass, you'll want it to look pretty. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the lighter or the darker green so I can blend. I'm snugging right against that etched line. That's what I love about this piece too, is that the lines are etched. So even when you paint, you can still kind of see that etched line. So it makes it really easy by coloring in a coloring book almost. Super easy to work with. So we wanna blend that into the other green. Cause I like blendy colors. Right up to the edge and blend it through into the other green. Now I put some of this buttercream, it's a pale yellow, almost white. Uh, I'm gonna rinse my brush, I'm gonna add a little bit of that to the edge as well. I'm gonna flip it upside down, make sure you can still see it, and I'm gonna go right around the inside edge of that rind with the yellow too, because you know how when you bust open a watermelon, it always has that little bit of that inner piece, that inner section that's kind of yellowy. 
So let's let's do that too. And that kind of turned into a light green, but we're gonna work with it. Just because my paint was still wet. That's all right. Around, and I still had some green on a brush too, so. I'm going to rinse that off. I'm going to get a better brush. This one's seen better days. Get something a little nicer. Not loaded with green. And I'm going to come around one more time with that buttercream right up next to that green. Now, I, I don't know if you can see that I'm not even trying to be perfect because if you ever cracked open a watermelon and the lines and the colors the rind and all that were perfect no you haven't they're never perfect so we're not gonna worry about perfection here that's a story of my life I'm not worrying about being perfect it takes so much stress off of you if you're not worrying about being perfect Kind of just let what happened happen. All right, so now it's time to add the red. So let's turn this right side up again. And we'll give it a second to make sure you're in view. And we're gonna paint the red, and I'm gonna add a little pink in that as well. So what I have for my red is Americana Primary Red. So we'll squirt a good bit of that out because obviously we're gonna use a lot. And I also have pink, which is hot pink by Folk Art. We're gonna add a little bit of that and we're gonna add, whoa, we're gonna add a little bit of white. Always have, that's not white, Cindy. That is not white. That is pearl. Well, that's fine with white. Okay, so a little bit of white too. Get it together. All right, so I'm just going to start with a base coat of red. Hey, Susie, how are you? I'm going to start with red. I'm just going to base out. I'm going to go right over these um, seeds because we're going to be able to still see where the seeds go. And I'm going to hit my center first. And then this wood is soaking up the paint. So one thing you can do before you get started, if you don't want the wood to soak up all your paint is seal it with one thin coat of an acrylic sealer. I don't mind so much. I do like the, or you could stain it too, but I kind of like the raw wood look. So we're not going to worry about it. I do need to hit my edge, so don't let me forget that. I'm going to go ahead and hit that right now. The edge really soaks up the paints. This wood is thirsty. Very thirsty. So this board came just like it is from Hobby Lobby. 10 bucks, but it was on sale, so I got it for five. But I'm guessing that you could probably just cut out a half circle if you wanted to. I'm trying to get this edge done so we don't have to think about it anymore. Thirsty wood. All right. So let's get their first coat of red on and then we'll be able to paint pretty. Oh, I don't know, Charlene. I've only met two of my neighbors because I've just been so crazy busy. But I did meet the neighbors to my left and right. I don't think the neighbor to my left is going to join anytime soon. 
She homeschools and has four kids. So she seems to be very busy on her own. She doesn't need any interference from me. And we really didn't even talk about what I do, I guess. Oh, I'm splattering. We'll work that out shortly. This is eating the paint. This first coat ought to seal it up really nicely though, and then we'll be able to come back over the top and add another coat and add our pink and manipulate how we want it to look. She may be the one who needs me most for sure, just for some time out, especially during the summer. Well, I guess if she homeschools, her kids are home all the time anyway, so she's probably used to it. They do have a swimming pool too, so I'm definitely gonna make her my new BFF, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so, so far so good, and you can still, I know you can see where you can still see all of our seeds, so that's awesome. Now, I do need to get close to the edge, so I am going to actually, I'm gonna grab a different brush, and I'm gonna add a little bit of white just on the tip of my brush. Can you see that? And I'm gonna come right around that edge where I added some yellow. And I'm gonna come about halfway. I'm gonna come about halfway around, right up next to that yellow. I want it to stay wet, so I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Then I'm gonna come back with my red. I need more red. I'm gonna come back with my red and get right up next to that line, blend it in a little bit with that white. Again, don't try to be perfect. Nobody expects that. Okay, come right up next to that white line. Let it blend in a little. Wow, that looks pretty good, guys. So I'm gonna come back and do the other half of that white line. Just right up next to that buttercream line that we made. Oops, I almost dipped in the red. Now we'll come into our red and get right up next to it. Ooh. We'll turn it this way a little bit so I can reach right up next to it. So we have that lighter pinky red, whoops. All right, so our rind looks really good. We are going to add glass to that, but you could futz with it a little more if you wanted to. Add some darker green around the edges, whatever makes you happy, but I'm gonna leave my, my rind as is because we are going to um, add glass to that part. But I'm gonna go in I'm gonna add, oh, I do have the pink already. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a section of red again, about a quarter of my watermelon. I'm gonna add that red too. I want it to be wet on wet, so I'm gonna only do a small section. That's probably about a third. Then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna wipe off just a little bit of that excess. I'm gonna go into that hot pink. And I'm gonna come in, need a little bit more. I'm gonna come in on this side with that hot pink and just blend it in 
with that red a little. That looks good. That looks yummy. And I'm actually gonna get a smidge of that white on my brush with that pink and just kind of hit that outside edge. So I want it to be darkest at the top and in the center and a little bit lighter towards the rind. So we'll let that blend into the red and then we'll do the next section. Thank you, Lee. I still had red on my, or pink on my brush, but let's do the next section. It looks cute. It does look sweet and juicy. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit of pink on my brush again. A little water on there. And I'm gonna go right on that edge towards the rind. Keep it darker at the top. I'm gonna to go in a little bit of white in Just lighten that up a little. We're just gonna keep going. Red again. Ugh, all right, I had pink still in my brush. Let me get that pink off. I want it to be darkest up here at the center. Oh my goodness, look at me. Hang on, I'm making a mess. Watch this. <laughs> I dribbled red, but let's go. Being a little sloppy. Get that red on. I'm gonna come in with some pink. And a tiny bit of white on the tips just to hit that edge. Super cute. So you can add in, if you get too much pink, just add some red on top. If you get too much red, you can add some pink on top, all that stuff. So I'm gonna get a little bit of white on my brush again. My brush is still dirty with that. Super, I'm gonna rinse. What's going on? Is the video skipping? What is happening? It's so hot here, it is probably melting the lines. <laughs> it's probably melting. Thank you for the stars, guys. It's probably melting all the internet lines. So, so stinking hot here. I'm gonna grab my, I'm actually gonna get a little, I'm gonna get a brush and get a little bit of green and try to fix that little mess I made right there with my red. Bit of dark green. No big deal. It is done. Actually, I'm going to hit this side too. Voila. Okay, I'm going to hit this with, I don't know why it keeps going in and out. But I'm going to hit this with my heat gun to dry it so we can paint our seeds. And all I'm using, you can use a hair dryer or just let it dry naturally. Um, but I'm gonna use my heat gun to get it dry so we don't have to wait. Hang on. Ah. 
I don't know why they're doing that, Renee. We're gonna get this dry and we're gonna do our, thank you, Amy. We're gonna do our, Linda, it is hot here, isn't it? It'll melt your hair. going to get this um, dry so we can add some black seeds. You can also paint the back if you wanted to or just stain it or seal it if you're going to put, out, put it outside. I'm not going to do that. It's going to be hanging on my window or on my door, sorry, at my studio. Yeah, it's hot everywhere, I think. A little wet over here still. So this, if you're just getting here, this board came from Hobby Lobby. It was pre-etched. It was $10, and I got it for 5 on sale. Marie's still in Winterland. Good. That feels dry. That feels dry here. 99 degrees in Alabama. That is gross. It's not even really summer yet. What is happening? I need to come to Idaho. Normally, I don't complain about hot weather because I'm a summertime girl. I love summertime. I love the pool, I love the ocean, I love the lake, I love hanging out in the summer. I do not like winter, but um, I am not about, not all about melting. The red is called primary red. Yes, it's so hot, so hot. So for my seeds, I'm gonna use a round, it's a number 10 round brush and it works really well for things that are pointy oval shaped. I don't know what Celsius is in Australia. Okay, so I'm gonna go left to right so I'm not getting my hand in all the things and I'm gonna twist this around so that I can reach things. <laughs> Global warming. So we're gonna just paint in. You can still see the seeds that were etched. So it makes it super easy to add your seeds. It's almost like coloring in a coloring book. When it's etched like this, it is so simple. So we're just going to paint in where all the seeds are. Around. My hands are kind of shaky today because I'm old and a little bit of arthritis going on in my life. We're going to get through it, aren't we? cold. Maria <laughs> said cold. It sounds cold. Is it winter time there? Is it winter still? I need a fatter brush so it doesn't take three days. May grab a bigger brush. So again, these came from Hobby Lobby and all their spring stuff is 50% off. So go grab you a couple. I'm gonna get a fatter one. Let's try this one. This one's a doozy. Bigger. It's a number something. Number 12. 
Let's see if that makes it easier. about the same. There are a lot of seeds, guys. <laughs> Hang with me. Hang loose. It's not like I can just skip them because you can still see them. They're everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, it really is hot. Extraordinarily hot, even for the south. It's usually not quite this hot. This is a giant seed. It is only worthy of being floating on the lake or floating in the ocean or in a swimming pool. If you have to be outside, you should be in somewhere cool on a float. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I'm ready to be on a float. Ooh, my hand's shaking. Let's get these done. There's a lot of shades. Thank you. Yes, Lee, in a pool. Do you know anyone who has a pool? Perhaps? These seeds are getting on my nerves. Severe thunderstorm warnings. The water, the gulf water is 80 degrees. That's terrible. Need one of those temperature regulated swimming pools. Even swimming pools here are like tub water because it's so hot already that you can't keep your pool cool. Your pool cool. We're almost there, guys. Five more. A lot of seeds. Four more. I like Sesame Street. Three coconut cream pies. Remember that? Who knows what happened after that? Who remembers? Am I giving my age away? Oh, is it not, Lee? Cool. Good to know. Oh my God, Felicia, that's terrible. Block of ice. That's a good idea. Just go get ice and throw it in your swimming pool. Or stay in the deep end. It's probably cooler in the deep end. One more. One. All right, look here. Voila. <laughs> okay, so trying to decide if we're going to add glass to the seeds as well. I don't know for sure if we are or not. So just in case we decide not to, I am going to 
show you what to do if you're not going to. So I'm gonna take my smaller brush again. I'm gonna get a tiny bit of white on just the tippy tip. And I'm gonna come around and add just a small little parenthesis, a little scoop around the edge of all the seeds. <laughs> seeds. 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 Voila. That way, if you don't want to add, you won't have to. Yeah, seed beads is too much. I mean, if you're doing this at home, but I'm not going to do that live because I would have to glue, put glue on every bead, on every seed, and then I would have to put seed beads and then let them dry, and we're, that's just too much for now. But if I was doing it like on camera or not live, I would totally consider doing that. Okay, so I have a little bit of green. Okay, this is green glass that we're gonna add along the outer edge. Then I also brought some Starfire that we're gonna add around the rind area right here. And while I'm thinking about whether to add a tiny bit of black or maybe even clear to the seed beads, or the seed beads, to the watermelon seeds, I'm gonna grab my dryer and dry these beads a little bit. Thank you for the stars. So we'll draw this. Yes, Sandy, it is. We get our, beet, our uh, seeds dry. Thank you, Rebecca. Super cute. You can even add some verbiage up here at the top if you wanted to. Maybe have less seeds uh, and then add um, like some words, your name, whatever. You could totally add that right in that, in that watermelon area. Got a couple that have got a little bit of wet paint. This is a heat gun, Lisa. It's just a cheapo $12, $15 heat gun from Amazon. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one more little touch before we move on. And y'all, if you follow me at all, you know I'm gonna do this. This is my Master's Touch graphic pen. And I use this to do fine lining because I have arthritis and it's super hard for me to use to do fine lining with a paintbrush. So I use a pen. The Master's Touch is a Hobby Lobby brand. So you're gonna get these illustration markers at Hobby Lobby. Now, if you're gonna be pouring resin over the top of this, you need to make sure it's an archive quality pen or a Posca pen or something that resin can go over the top of. All right, now I've got paint all up in my fingernails. You really could do that, Susan. That would be fantastic. So what I'm gonna do with my pen is I'm gonna come along that rind and I'm just gonna make short stroke lines in my rind around the edges. And I'm not trying to be perfect. We'll get one in this area too. Just add another dimension. And then I'm gonna come out here to the green parts and I'm gonna make just a few little short stroke. Now this is gonna be covered up by glass, but if you choose not to, I can't get that one to go. If you choose not to do glass, this is a good option, just to give it a little extra something. The last thing I'm gonna do is go around my seeds. And all I'm gonna do is go one side and the other side. And I'll show this to you close up. So 
Don't try to line the whole thing and don't try to be super tidy. And I just smeared black and that's okay. I'll show you this close up so you can see kind of how messy and imperfect it is, but it does bring that little added whimsy. So that's what we're going to do to our seeds. Just a little bit of extra whimsy to the seeds. Gives them a little more dimension. All right, I got a little black there from my hand. I have black paint, so I'm gonna just grab a little bit of this pink and red and try to just get rid of that a little. Maybe not, maybe I'm not going to. Maybe it's gonna be black there. Let's do this. Yeah, baby, I tell you what, I have one of Miss G's wipes. Let's see if I can get that black paint off. Normally I wouldn't bother too much, but that stands out pretty bad. So let's see. Oh, look at there. Yeah, that was from my hand. So let's just get that off my hand too while we're at it. Finger painting now. Finger painting. Watch this. <laughs> That's how you do it professionally. The seeds do pop. I love these wipes too. They're so good for everything. So let me see if I can get all this mess off my hands. Uh, we'll push this paint away before I make another mess. Okay, so uh, I think, I don't know if I'm gonna add the uh, Black. I think I'm gonna leave the seeds as they are and just add green to the rim. Okay, so because it's gonna be so close to the edge, I am gonna use a little bit of this clear tacky glue. This also comes from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just gonna make a little bead line of glue right about an eighth of an inch to the edge of my um, watermelon rind. And that's going to kind of help me keep my glass lined up where I want it and keep it from like just wanting to fall off the edge. Hopefully. Hopefully that will be the case. So I'm going to grab up some green in my hand. And I'm just going to start adding a little and then we'll line it up as we need to. And I have clear we're gonna use too, so. So I'm just pushing it to the edge, to my glue line. Just use your finger as a guide. We'll get some more. This is so cute. So cute. going to add some clear along the rind there so we don't want to get too close. Oh girl, I'm always getting my hand in paint or glue or something. Smearing it everywhere. Thank you for the sprinkle, Trish. All right, I'm gonna move this around so I can keep going. One more. Thank you, Beverly. 
I've actually, I've been, I've, last weekend I went to the lake. I think it was last weekend, weekend before maybe. I went to the lake and I was at the beach before that. And I tanned super, super easy. So there's always that. Oops, hang on. Yeah, I can be out in the sun 10 minutes and have a copper tone tan. do it. I'll just use my other hand to block it. Keep it lined up. Now, I'll come in and add some of these fallen bits in. All right, let me get back in line. Now, I'm going to take some Starfire, which is crystal clear. Some of these pieces are ridiculous. Look at that big old thing. We're not using that. Those are too big. So I'm gonna try real quick to pull out any monsters. I don't know why this particular bit of Starfire is so big. I'm gonna add a little bit of the Starfire to the outer edge, inner edge, I guess, but next to the green. The clear will allow color to still show through. It's hot here, hot everywhere I think. Except Australia. So I'm really just trying to keep it out of the red that's my only thing. Need some smaller pieces. Hang on. Your color ran for the rust. Thank you, Christine. Hmm. Did you look? I don't, I don't know. I've never really had that problem. I'm wondering if it is the brand of paint you're using. If you're using the same paint, I'm wondering if you got bad paint, if it wasn't thoroughly dry. I don't know. I've never had the paint run like that. So it's hard to troubleshoot that. Yeah, I'm going to save those big ones for something that will, like I, for uh, our July project inside the Shattered Circle, I'm doing a monochromatic piece. And it's going to be a big, oversized piece, so that'll work really well. Those will work really well for that. It won't matter the size. There's some big doozies in there. There's some doozies. Yeah, using a, a poly sealer before you resin would definitely keep that from happening, but it's still annoying that you have to take that extra step. There just doesn't seem to be a reason for it. All right, let me get a little bit more. Put the doozies down.
have mercy. I'm sorry. <laughs> this phone dies so fast. It gets on low power mode so fast, and I know it's annoying. I had no idea that it was doing that, so I apologize. So, look at this. This is so stinking cute. Again, I think I was saying while we were no sound that I'm not going to add glass to my seats. You could totally do that if you want it, um, but I'm not gonna do it on mine, but you could totally just put some clear or even some little black nuggets on the uh, seeds if you so choose. You could also add your name or summer or something up at the top, okay? So we are going to pour resin now. Yeah, it was me and my phone dying again. I don't know why my phone uh, does that. Oh no, Edie, no, no, no. God bless you, girl. Let me see. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna grab some gloves. We're gonna pour some resin. So I think for this, I'm going to mix two ounces. It might be too much, but I do have some things I need to resin. So, so cute, isn't it? Let's scooch it down. So cute. And it does have the little rope attached to the back. Uh, go out and come back in, somebody, if you don't have sound. I know you can't hear me saying that, but uh, the sound should be back. Is the sound back, Catherine? So I'm gonna mix two ounces. So I'm gonna mark my lines on my cup. My one ounce here. And one ounce here. Somewhere. And I have something else to resin if we have too much, but remind me if we don't use it all to tell you exactly how much we use. Don't let me go out without that. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm using art resin just like always. So I think that, um, I don't know if there's an ounce in here. So let me, hey Shirley, thanks for coming. So let me see if I have an ounce in here. certainly do not. It's okay, I have more. I knew I didn't. So that is the hardener. That's the hardener, so let's make sure that um, we pour hardener. Let me grab some right here. One ounce of hardener. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, Nelly. Yeah, bump that too. Okay, and then the other cup is gonna have resin. I'm just gonna go ahead and get the bigger bottle. I did paint the edges. So we have an ounce of hardener and an ounce of resin. You need your measurements to be super tight, close, exact. Don't guess. And I am going to grab my handy dandy little, this is actually a palette knife, but I'm using it as a stir stick and I have a cup that I've been using uh, to mix in as well. So I'm gonna dump part, both parts into my little mixing cup. And you wanna make sure you get all that out of there. Thank you for the stars. Make sure you get all that goodness out so that your mix is correct. And you can wipe this out and reuse it or toss it, whatever you want, whatever works for you. So we'll do this. Just 
scrape, scrape. And Okay, so now we have to mix this for three minutes, guys, okay? So we're gonna stir gently. We're not gonna beat it to death. We're not gonna whip it. We're not gonna make meringue. We're gonna stir as slow as we can, scraping the sides and the bottom so everything is all mixed up really nicely. And we're gonna do that for three minutes. Catherine is timing me and she will let me know when our three minutes is up so that I can chat with you guys. So if anybody has a question that um, needs answering, I am here for you. Ask away. So again, you're not whipping it. You're not beating it to death. We want to minimize air bubbles. So we're going to just gently stir, stir, stir. Uh, Deb, I used uh, Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue from Hobby Lobby. Uh, you don't really have to use glue under your glass, uh, especially if it's the tempered glass. I just did that to keep it tight on the edge, but you just want to use a, a glue that dries quickly and that dries clear. You could totally use real watermelon seeds. How fun would that be? Becky, that's a great idea. That would be so much fun. Uh, right now, my table has a piece of cardboard over it, Edith. Um, uh, normally, I would use like that brown craft paper, but I'm out. So I just threw a piece of cardboard up here until I could uh, get some more craft paper. Um, I do sometimes reuse my little cups uh, I don't always because I'm bad that way and all you really need to do is wipe them out with like a um, dry paper towel or an alcohol wipe or a little baby wipe of some sort. Let it dry. Yes, Elmer's clear glue will totally work. Stir slowly. Does the green glass have a specific name or is it just green? It is called Green Classic on my website, which is artshattered.com. I sell glass by the pound and it's just called Green Classic. Stir, stir, stir. Any more questions? We're running, oh, Catherine said it's time. So our three minutes is up. So what I'm gonna do, I don't have to elevate. Normally, I would um, elevate whatever I'm working on so that it's not sitting flush to the table. But because those ha this has braces behind it, I don't have to do that. Um, Ren, you can refill. I do that all the time. That is why my bottle looks so grungy is because I buy gallon sizes and I just refill my 16 ounces. All right, so I'm going to start with my green glass and I'm just going to drizzle the resin right on top of that glass. Now, if you're worried about the resin going over the edge onto the back of your um, piece, you can totally just run some tape along the back so that if it does drip over the edge and form bubbles, it'll form those little drips on the um, tape and not your wood piece. So tape the back if you're heavy-handed resin. Let's see. Uh, Mary Ellen. Oh my goodness, Mary Ellen. Uh, the heat will affect the resin slightly, Tina. Art Resin, which is the brand of resin I use, put out a blog post today about um, how heat affects resin. It does make uh, your resin, I think it makes your resin, I've had this experience, 
um, it makes it um, unusable faster. It's like it makes it hot and it makes it unusable faster. But you can go to artresin.com and there is everything you need to know about Art Resin. Like I said, they just put out a post today about heat, about the heat and how it affects the um, resin process. So I'm doing my green and I'm trying to keep it from going over the edge too much. The glass is so close to the edge that it, that's hard to control. So I'm just gonna live with whatever happens on that side. And if we get a bunch of drips, then I'll come on tomorrow or I'll do a little quick video showing you how to get rid of those. But you can pre-tape before you resin, before you add your glass and before you resin, just run a little bit of tape, that blue painter's tape on the out on the back side of it. And then after your resin is dry, you want to pull that tape because it's got to come off within 24 hours or it may never come off. It will be stuck for life. All right, so I'm just going to continue with the glass. scooch that little piece of glass in a little it's being bad kind of hanging over the edge and I don't really want that yes Edie I hope that you get past that very soon that has to be miserable I'm scoot those little bits in so cute guys I wish that you could see it in person I wish every one of you could just come and look because even when it's super cute online it, it if you think it's super cute online that means it is super duper cute in person because it always is always looks better in person and anybody who's done um, a piece using glass and resin can verify that because the pictures never do it justice. So we're almost there. Get that drip. Almost there. Where's Rima today? Rima must have a live too. Okay, so once I get to the end, I'm going to take whatever's left and I'm going to drizzle it in the middle. It's not a lot. I'm going to get the rest and I'm going to drizzle it in the middle and then we're going to rub all that in. Break that bottom up. We use every single smidge of that. Look how it really starts to pop. It's hard to see on camera, but the resin really makes the color bright and vivid. I don't know if you can tell because it's just kind of a reflection, reflective glare now. So I'm just going to smear it around all the way to the edges. I'm going to bump it this way a little bit. I'm going to make sure it's all covered as much as possible. I got 
heavy handed over here by the glass. So I was trying to hurry, I think. So go all the way to the edge with your resin. And then we're gonna hit it with some heat just to pop any bubbles that might have formed. Hey, get back there. That may have formed while we were mixing. Okay, so let me make sure it's all covered. I'm gonna go around the outside edge See if I have any issues. Looks good. All right, so look how cute. I know it's got a little glare on it. I'm gonna actually take my finger with resin on it and just kind of hit that top edge. I'm not even looking at it. I'm just going to hit it sight unseen. And because that edge doesn't have a boatload of paint on it, it is going to absorb that resin. So it's not going to have like full coverage. Go around the outside. All right, now I'm going to take these gloves off. It's so cute. Take my gloves off. And we're gonna use the heat gun again. You can use a torch, a heat gun, whatever heat source you have available. And we're gonna hit it on the resin to pop any bubbles. So, and I think we're gonna do one more thing after that. So stay tuned, don't go away yet. All right, I'm gonna hit it with my torch just for one second because I want this resin to stay warm. Just for a second while I do one little last thing. So I'm just gonna hit it. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm gonna grab something. Hang on. I lied. Because I am going to add, if I have black, oh no, I don't have black, I don't have black. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that. I thought I had, oh, I do. I do have black seed beads, so this is optional, and you're going to do this after you heat it up. So I'm going to put some of these black opaque seed beads into a little baby cup. These are 12 OB treasures from Hobby Lobby. And I am going to just put a few, and if they get out of line, I'm just gonna use a toothpick, oops, to push them back where they need to be. Just want a few little seeds, whoops. I got a little excessive. Now what I can do is grab a toothpick. Just use the toothpick to kind of keep those in line. I got a little bubble there too. Probably from the wood breathing. So I'm just going to push those into where they need to be. Ugh, got my arm in that. So if you have seed bead gone rogue like this one, you can just push it in with a little toothpick. This is so cute. This was the perfect addition. There's a little 
bubble. Got a rope. We got a piece of fuzz too. I don't know where that little fuzz buzz came from. Over there. So just Push them where they need to be, and they should stay right there. Stuck in that resin. All right, I'm gonna hit it with my heat gun one more time. Don't use your flame. If you use a torch, you don't wanna to torch this after the fact, because you're gonna burn your beads. But you can use like a heat gun. You see, I just blew one off course. Blew two off course. And several off course. That's okay, we'll get them back. I just saw some bubbles popping up because of the wood. Wood is porous, so you are gonna have some bubbling that you're not gonna be able to control. So don't think for a minute that you're gonna get every single bubble out of a piece that you've done on wood because it ain't gonna happen wood breathes and unless it's sealed with several coats of sealer it's going to bubble so let me show you this close up this is so cute let me pick this up without getting my hands in it i'll show you this side so you can see the seed beads and where the glass is i love it that is so stinking cute